Hey guys, it's Ed. Now, I can't speak for everyone here at the shop, but I personally love lathes. Our little Emco Maximat V13 has been great for quick little jobs that are too busy to fuss with CNCing, but the absolute worst thing about it is that the carriage feed handle is in 1 128th of an inch increments. I think this is as a result of it being a metric machine with inch dials on it, but ain't nobody got time to fool around with trying to do that math. So we wanted to throw a quick cheap DRO on it. We found this Shars unit and came up with a really easy, somewhat novel way of mounting this to the machine using just one screw hole in the carriage and a small cheapo mag base to secure the scale to the bed of the lathe. Needed this adapter plate to go between the scale and that mag base. So that's what we'll be making today. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. DRO is a digital readout of a machine's positions in one or more axes. In this case, we just have the Z, though I can definitely say we will be getting a similar unit for the X. Basic operating principles of this thing is exactly the same as your handy set of digital calipers, just a bit longer and with a remote scale. First up, custom ground shear hog inserts from our friends at AB Tools. Back when I was doing the pocket NC tombstone, I thought it'd be great if I could finish with a shear hog surface finish is fine it just has that taper on it so I wasn't able to do that but they hooked us up with some custom straight ground inserts unfortunately these have to be matched to the tool so it's not something they can just sell off the shelf but I think that if you want to have these made you can either get a dedicated holder for it or send yours in and have a few ground up it's a great way to do long reach reasonably well finished straight walls I'm gonna use the same insert for roughing and finishing the sidewalls and since these inserts have been ground, the diameter is a hair smaller than the nominal three quarters of an inch this tool usually is. So I measured the actual diameter using our Spironi tool setter and entered that value into Fusion as the tool's diameter. So starting off with that tool in a 3D adaptive roughing operation, running at max RPM of 7,500 and eight thou feet per tooth. Depth of cut is 250 thou, width of cut is 100 thou. For the finish facing and contouring, I dropped the RPM down to 6400, which I've noticed tends to help the surface finish. Might be a balance issue. And I was feeding at 0 0.0034 inch per tooth. This top face toolpath was a 2D contour around this circle with 0.4 inch wide roughing passes to leave that nice circular finish and I selected the outside contour of the part as the stock so that we wouldn't be cutting a bunch of air. Next up spotting and drilling some holes and I always like to spot deep enough to leave a nice chamfer after I drill the hole if at all possible and there's a great new height option in Fusion that they snuck in. Under hole bottom we have some chamfer options now which will automatically leave consistently sized chamfers when spotting different sized holes in the same op. Before this I'd have to go in and manually fiddle around with each hole size until it looked about right. So this is great. Then chamfering with the 3 8 4 flute Lakeshore Carbide Spiral Flute Chamfer Mill. Max RPM 7500 and 1 thou per tooth. Then of course engraving some branding with the Lakeshore Carbide 20 degree engraving tool and a 2D trace tool path. Max RPM 2 thou feed per tooth.
for op two, I used a four jaw vise and made some quick soft jaws. Flipped it, roughly decked off the backside using the shear hog. And finished it up with a superfly and some chamfers. The only other machined part that we had to make for this project was this little spacer to go between the plate we made and the mag base. I went with this setup because it was really easy to mount and rather than trying to bolt something back behind like a permanent industrial style DRO would have, not super rigidly mounted so if something crashes the magnet's going to move before things start to break themselves. One bolt at this end holding the scale to the cross slide, just sort of eyeball it straight. If you need travel in a different range of the bed you can just move the mag base. Reused the adjustable arm from the mag base, waste not one not, for the readout of the DRO. And since that has magnets on the back, I just mounted a steel plate there. That way you just pop it right off to change the batteries if needed. Card here to this project's page on the NYC CNC site where you can download the F3D file for this project and check out all of the cam data and toolpaths in more detail. All right, that's all for this time. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.